Hey there folks. So I have a uh, yet another iteration of uh, this Game Boy Advance HDMI out docking backlit. Well, it's not a backlit kit, uh, but it is an HDMI out kit for Game Boy Advance. Um, this is a new iteration of this kit. I have done a similar video before with this white and black GBA. Uh, this was the first iteration of the kit. It was just HDMI out only. We still needed another backlight kit or quite frankly we could have used it with the stock LCD but I chose to install it in a Game Boy with a backlight kit because I thought that was a little bit more fun. Um, but it just provided the micro HDMI out, micro HDMI out on the Game Boy itself. You plug that in and then you play it off the Game Boy and all was hunky-dory. Um, video output options or lack thereof kind of sucked and the HDMI scaling was not great. Um, then they came out with a slightly improved version of the kit that I installed into uh, this Game Boy uh, and it came in two parts that are pretty much exclusively designed to work together and totally wholly incompatible. Uh, and cannot coexist in the same Game Boy without um, doing some freaky deaky stuff. Uh, so if you recall this install, which I'll link both original installs in the uh, description, um, there is the docking kit, which comes with uh, this dock. You might notice it looks identical. Uh, the only difference is the old dock is USB-C only, the new one has USB-C for power and a micro HDMI on the dock itself, but otherwise all the I.O. is the same. Um, this guy, you were supposed to dock the Game Boy Advance into the housing, or into this white dock here, and this dock would provide power to the Game Boy Advance uh, and it would let you control, you know, send all your button inputs via Super Nintendo or one of those, like, um, Nintendo mini console controllers here. And it kind of worked. The power usage on this thing is absolutely heinous. There's almost no point in using it battery powered, uh, hence the dock add-on, but... The dock add-on also doesn't fit with the backlight kit that was in here. Um, they, uh, it, was, it was a whole mess. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. This is besides the point. This still works totally fine, but we're going to try the new version um, anyway. So this is take three, attempt three at uh, an HDMI out kit. Oh, one more thing is that I think is probably worth mentioning. Um, when I did the video for this specific kit, I complained that the scaling options for the HDMI was, um, well, I didn't know that there were options at the time, and the default is full screen um, with the wrong aspect ratio, and I complained about that, but if you press and hold the touch sensor, it actually gives you a few options. We'll go over that more once I've got this thing hooked up and working, uh, but instead of these two Game Boys, we're going to be messing with a totally different Game Boy. Um, I installed the Funny Playing 3.0 ITA kit into this Game Boy already. This is the uh, updated version with the working FRM feature, which realistically this should have just been the retail version, but here we are. Um, I get lots of questions and comments asking specifically about this version, if it's compatible with funny playing stuff, and I mean, electrically it should be, and physically it should be, but I've heard mixed results, so try it out and find out together, huh? Um, anyway, before we tear this thing down, let's take a look at what this comes with. So you've got the dock itself, which takes USB-C input. Uh, has a micro HDMI output. I really wish they'd have just put mini or even full-size HDMI. Not like they didn't have the room, um, but whatever. Uh, you've also got your Nintendo mini connector. I uh, totally forget what this is called. It's the same connector on top, on the bottom of the Wii nunchuck, but then they also reused it for the uh, Famicom mini and Super Famicom mini and uh, Nintendo Entertainment System Mini, SNES Mini, same thing. Um, 
it's literally just the Super Nintendo controller connector, but in a different form factor. They should be cross compatible with both. I've tested that previously and we'll test the actual dock using an original Super Famicom controller and um, one of these Ava Do bad boys, wherever the dongle is, there it is. Uh, but either way, should be fine. Uh, it also comes with a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter dongle thing, or at least mine did. Um, I like the micro HDMI cables a little bit better than the dongles. They tend to be a little bit more reasonable around the connector. There's just, there's a lot of cable hanging off a very little bit, very small connector, and it's kind of sketchy, but it is what it is. Anyway, onto the, uh, in course, as it were. Here's what you get. You get a ribbon cable. Uh, mine is the 40-pin version. I believe this also comes in a 32-pin version. Uh, they should be functionally identical, with the exception that 32-pin version has a connector for 32-pin cables and not 40-pin. But um, Otherwise, not a whole lot to say about this. This is probably using similar chips. Oh no. Uh, we've got this unmarked chip right here. I'm betting this is the same Go-In FPGA that they use on basically all of their other kits. Uh, I think it was like a little B or something. Mm, don't quote me on that. I'm trying to see if I have one handy. Yeah. One of these bad boys. I mean, it's the exact same size and exact same package, but there's really no way to know for sure. It's probably the same thing, but anyway. Uh, we've also got this. I have no idea what that is. That is, let's see if we can read that off. That's ITE. The part number is IT66121FN. Uh, next line, 1818-BXG, and final line, A15K8C. I don't know how helpful that's going to be, um, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> we've also got some solder pads right here, totally unlabeled. I'd wager these are button inputs, probably ground, LR, and select based off of... Um, previous experience. Who knows if they're actually wired up to anything. There are no touch sensors on this thing. Uh, I don't even see any ICs to control touch sensors. Over here, I'm guessing we have a matrix switcher. Uh, I don't know what that is. STC8HK28B A799775. I don't know, some microcontroller of some sort. And then this last chip here, T7008C, next line, 2103A. I'm guessing that's a power regulator, uh, providing power to these two chips. Um, I doubt they run off the five volts that this thing would be getting from the Game Boy. Um, and then the rest is all just like passives, filters, inductors, diodes. Etc. Nothing too fancy. Uh, we've got the same two custom ribbon cables that we got with the previous iteration. This thing uh, that we soldered onto the board and connected up to that little standalone board down there. Uh, the difference is this time it's all one big board. Um, and then we have four wires that Oh look, four solder pads, four wires. I'm guessing those go together. Um, the instructions aren't very clear, but shouldn't be too unreasonable. Let us go ahead and dig in here. Let me just pull up my instructions. Give me just a sec. All right, I have just reviewed the instructions on this and I already have some concerns, but uh, before going into it, let's tear down this dock and, and see if the hardware is any different than uh, last time around. Or rather, how different it is. I know it's going to be a little different on account of having the 
HDMI in here, um, but I'm fairly certain this is just a pass-through. I don't think the dock is doing anything different than last time. What do you want? What? All right, just four Phillips screws under the foot again. Didn't expect them to change it from last time. It's easier to update a mold than to just make a new one. Suppose that doesn't actually have to come out. Okay. Nothing interesting on the bottom of the board, but on the top of the board, oh, two screws, not one. But on the top of the board, we have I'm pretty sure this is identical to what we had last time. Uh, just an STC microcontroller uh, that is handling the controller ports. Um, and then you can see the uh, LCD or the video signal lines running from the USB-C port to the HDMI port. And then it's just getting power from... Uh, USB. Uh, there's no voltage regulation on this or anything. Everything is handled by this board. Uh, this is literally just a pass-through with controller inputs. Um, nothing interesting. Didn't expect it to be, but it is what it is. Now we know. Let me go ahead and get this reassembled here. This is probably going to be a long video, so I'll pause for just a moment. Okay, wasn't too bad. Uh, these wires, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later. This is absolutely not solder free. Uh, we will need to solder to get this installed. Otherwise, uh, without soldering, I think it should technically be plug and play as long as you don't care for having button inputs, um, external button inputs, the on Game Boy ones will still work, um, or having external power. So it would still run off the internal battery. You couldn't plug in USB-C to get um, to power this, which is probably, it's not gonna work out too well because the only output on this thing is USB-C and I doubt it's a standard implementation of USB-C. So you probably have to use this dock I sincerely doubt any USB peripheral is going to work on this. Um, they're using a Type-C connector, but I sincerely doubt this does not adhere to Type-C standards. Anyway, let's move on. Pull the RM battery out of here, and let's pull this bad boy apart. And I'm going to be undoing the button controls for the backlight kit that's already in here. Um, I could have them installed at the same time that I have these ribbons placed, but I have to uninstall the buttons to get these soldered down and with the touch sensor there's no real need to have button controls on this kit. So. Mm. I don't know, maybe the mood will strike me and I'll change my mind. Not like that hasn't happened before. Anyway. Move that over. Oh, I didn't think about this. Hopefully it actually fits with that bracket. If not, I'll grab a different GBA. Okay. 
that would flip up that. That's going to go in there-ish. Uh, that's kind of weird how that's plugged in. Okay. Oh, I think I had it backwards. No, we're, we're good. I'm just checking to see if it actually physically fits. And you know what? It is shockingly close. Uh, but I think we're going to be good. Wow, okay. I was wondering what this uh, basically keep out area was on the PCB where there's no copper, there's just two lines and then nothing between them. That's exactly where the cart slot sits. So the cart slot rubs against this board um, because of physically how it's positioned. And over time that would wear through the board and if there were any traces like this in that area, it would uh, short against them or even uh, break them, but there's nothing in that area. It's all on the side of the board. So that's shockingly well thought out. Um, forgive me, but this company doesn't usually put that much effort into their products. I might be a little bit biased. Okay. So let's try it out. Uh, I'm gonna get this desoldered so that I can get that unplugged without having to worry about messing it up by accident. This is going to be incredibly tedious to test, but I think we'll manage. This cable gets plugged into the connector closest to the USB-C port, but you got to slip it through from the other side, pins down. Actually, it's probably easier to send it on the top, isn't it? You know, I've complained about other flat flex connectors for being a pain in the butt to use, and these ones usually are not that difficult. I don't know why I was struggling so hard with that. Okay. Just like that. That's exactly what we want. Then, we can come in here. Plug that in. And I'm fairly certain it's supposed to go like that. It's kind of silly, but sure. We can test this out just like this. in there to hold that in place that in there GBA is on like that in and I need to power this thing I'm just pulling up my capture so I can see it
Hey, and indeed it does work. Um, I'm not recording the footage right now because I forgot to start recording. <laughs> but we'll we'll see more of that later. Um, it does work though, so I'm good good to go ahead and continue the install. I know that from this point, depending on the nature of any problems I have, any problems I have are probably my own doing. So, uh, oh, I should test it with the kit itself, shouldn't I? This is wildly confusing. I think that goes in like this. I don't know why these connectors are so tight. This is also going to be a pain in the butt to test. But we'll figure something out. Got the screen on there. Oh, I think I just dropped the light bite. Yep. Gonna set that down. Is indeed outputting and that should have switched no okay it supports both modes probably got a toggle between it not too big a deal okay that is extremely extremely sketchy okay we're good though I'm just going to unplug this from here. So that is the easiest connector to deal with. And let's get this soldered up. So we want to get this stuck down. We need to make sure this actually lines up with the proper pads. Kind of flexible. Alignment could be better, but certainly good enough.
Careful not to get solder on the button contacts. In fact, it's probably a good idea to just mask those off with some capped on or masking tape or something. I'm confident in my soldering ability, so I'm not masking it. But I have been soldering for decades at this point. And I'm usually pretty good at knowing my own limits. Okay. Usually. So one of the nice things about this ribbon is that the, um, the mod gets its audio through this. So we don't need any extra wires to get audio. Which is nice because routing wires from here is sometimes kind of a pain in the butt. Just because there's so many pinch points. Here we go again, someone's grumpy. No. Oh. Oh, I'm surprised. Maybe I've spoken too soon. Alright. Ta-da! Oh, there he goes. Ah. just love the laminated kits. They're always so easy to take apart and do work on the inside of the console because everything just stays exactly where it's supposed to be. There's never any need to like reseat parts, you know, it just, it just works. I'm just trying to make sure we can actually do the fold we want to do. Bend that backwards. Oh, Christ, this is fiddly. Okay, let's unplug that. Just set this whole thing aside for now. This gets folded something like that.
And then just like that, you have these bad boys that can seat in those connectors. Uh, but before doing that, I wanted to get this lined up so I can try and get this notch cut in the housing. Let's see what the instructions say to do. There's still some more wiring we have to do, but I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult when we can't move this around as much. We need to... This notch is to clear that screw post. So to get this seated properly, good lord. We need to cut out that part of the shell. should go right about there. So I'm going to start cutting a small notch and we will, I don't know, kind of guess and check, I guess. It's going to be kind of fiddly. Uh, I am going to do my cutting with, with this cheap set of needle files that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, like three dollars for the ones without the handles and they're identical just without the handles uh, but I'm gonna use this round file here and one of these flat ones which one do I like has the flat side and the curved side. Uh, but otherwise I'm just gonna take out the bulk of the material by filing it down. Uh, I'm gonna do this off camera though because I don't want to do it at my desk. This is gonna leave a lot of plastic dust behind. Um, highly recommend wearing proper protective equipment for this uh, such as a respirator so you don't inhale this stuff. Um, one of the reasons I'm going to do this offline so I can go do it outside. Um, but otherwise it's just file it down and then try and install it and see how it fits. We can drop this in. Unplug this. But you can do test fits without the LCD in there. And I can already see I got my markings just a little bit off. So I'm glad I checked that. Looks like it wants to go right up against that screw post instead of centered straddling it. So hmm. your mileage may vary. But yeah, I'm going to start cutting and then I don't know. We'll see. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm doing a test fit, checking my progress. And just want to show you guys real quick. I intentionally cut the hole too small so I can go back and widen it out. Uh, you can always remove more material, but you can never add material once it's removed, which is the biggest reason why the last one of these I did, I have a 3D printed bezel on it <laughs> to try and clean up some of the excess material that I removed. Uh, but in this case, I need to keep going a little bit, so I'm gonna do that. But that's why we. Take a little bit, check, take a little bit, check, etc. Okay, it could use a little bit of fine tuning, but I think it's good enough for what it is. Um, I'm not 100% sure how well this is going to fit in here anyway, because this is designed around an OEM style shell where it can brace up against these screw posts. But Funny Playing has them just a little bit recessed because of the 
backlight kit style, so mm, things might get a little bit weird, but we'll we'll figure it out. Let's go ahead and get this plugged in because I don't think I'm going to be unplugging it again anymore. Or try to at least. So go in there. And then we can just eat up the extra excess ribbon cable like that. And it'll fold itself flat when we assemble it. Okay. So, mine came with four wires. Uh, those pads apparently have uh, nothing to... We don't need to solder these. Uh, but it would actually be interesting to find out if those are button controls like I was suspecting. So I've got my multimeter in continuity mode. And we'll just test it out. I know that's a ground. Yep. Is this going to be L or R? Or select? No. Or at least if it is, it's not. Totally in parallel. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what those are. But they're not button inputs. I suppose it would be weird if they were because, you know, it already has the button inputs. Anyway, moving on. Let's do the rest of the wiring. All right, so they want us to wire up three of these four pads here. The fourth one is ground. I don't think we need to wire that up. Do they really want us to wire that up? Ground, ground. Yeah, there's already plenty of continuity. Uh, that does not instill confidence. But let's follow the instructions anyway. That tinned, maybe. There are zero thermal reliefs on that ground. One big ground plane, I just bumped the heat up on my iron. It's still not doing a very good job. Okay. A little bit more, maybe. There we go. Yeah, if you're having trouble getting solder to stick to that pad, I'm again, I'm not so sure it's necessary, but crank the heat on your iron and you'll get it. And it turned up to 340 to do that, and I normally keep it at about 270. This is just going to go right up and over to the negative battery terminal. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Whew. In the diagram, it, it visually looks like that is soldered up to the positive battery terminal, but it's, the wires cross over. It's not just looks like it is. Okay. Solder right there in the meat of the connector, maybe. Oh, you know what? I'm overthinking this.
My iron's struggling tonight. Good lord. I'm going to solder it right to that big solder pad right there, labeled battery minus. I think any other ground should work too, but this is what we're using. Because that's what the instructions say to do. Alright, next up we need a wire for battery plus which is this pad right here, also unlabeled. And then this last one is F underscore O. <sighs> Let's do battery plus first. Battery plus probably goes to battery plus right here. And once again, just going to solder that on the other side. That's how we lose screwdriver tips. Solder this to bat plus. Boom. And last one. I, ugh. so they say to go ahead and uninstall the fuse and then we, I hate this, absolutely hate this. But let's get that fuse out of there. I am physically leaving the fuse in there so that, because otherwise I'm just going to lose it and throw it out. Um, but it's physically in there so I can reinstall it if I want. But notice the right pad is now on the left and the left pad is just hanging off into space. Easy peasy. I am going to flatten it out. And this leftmost pad gets soldered to right where we removed the fuse from. Worst part is, I know by the fact that we're removing the fuse that this thing is going to draw a ton of power. The last one did, why would this one be any different? Um, but also we removed the fuse. All right, I think we're done with the wiring. Uh, oh, there is one more thing we can do. Okay, this last solder pad here, 
I am going to go ahead and solder my wire up to it, but I'm going to leave the other end disconnected for now. And I'll show you why. once we get there. Oh, I can do a little bit better than that. There we go. Now I'm going to leave this disconnected because what this is, is this is just a 5 volt from the USB input. Uh, that we can connect up to our rechargeable battery mod, but I don't want to solder this up together right now because um, I have to feed this wire through the shell first, which is going to be it's going to be a whole ordeal. I just know it. Let's go ahead and get this reinstalled. Don't forget your light pipe. Extra wires are from my IPS kit that I removed. Could reinstall them. It wouldn't be too big of a deal to just solder them over the flat flex. It's fine. I was kind of hoping that uh, those buttons were passed through on the uh, on this board here, so that I could just connect them from here to here. I thought that would be pretty neat, but. Apparently, uh, that is not a thing. Not a thing that this iteration does. Ah, uh. oh, this is going to be such a Can't even do that because it just pushes on the screen. Okay. So I'm just gonna try and hold this mess in, in one. Oh wait, no, I can't do that yet because I gotta install this too. Uh. Is that backwards? I don't think that's backwards. Fairly certain that goes that way. I don't know, it feels shockingly loose. It's weird. No, well, it was right there. like that, that's seated. Now I can try holding this down while I feed this in. This up while I feed this in. Okay. Install that. everything stays in place. Try and get that seated. Okay. Okay. I 
Things are coming together somehow. It's a little tight, but I think it'll go together. Oh no. The HDMI board just barely isn't clearing the bracket up top here. I don't know if this is something we can solve by trimming the board or the bracket or neither and we just have to live with it. that oh wait it might be this ribbon connector that's sticking up frustrating because I'm trying to see what's not fitting and now the whole laminated kit is just not seated. This is fiddly. I'm gonna play with this and I'll report back. Okay, y'all are gonna be pissed, but I took out the new funny playing laminated bracket and I installed the older funny playing laminated bracket. Please don't pop out, please don't pop out. Um, and everything just kind of fits. There, no, no trimming necessary. Uh, so the bracket that funny playing is currently shipping with their kits doesn't let this thing fit, but the one that they used to ship with their kits and don't ship anymore, fits. <laughs> uh, I'm confident this thing can be trimmed to allow to fit. You really just got to shave off like this edge right here. Uh, just shave it down and it'll work. Um, this older bracket seems fine. You know what? I'm not even going to chance it. I've got light pipe, start select. I'm screwing this thing together. Screw it. If we need to adjust anything else, I'll just buy another Game Boy at this point. I don't I don't want to take this thing apart ever. This is one of the most fiddly things I have ever done. Worst part is it's not even the kit that makes it fiddly. It's just funny playing's LCD mounting that makes it fiddly. Next up, we need to cut. Okay, good, that fits. <laughs> I was about to throw it out if that didn't fit. Okay. Now we need to cut USB port hole room. Uh, I'm thinking the easiest way to do this. Just line it up. I'm going to mark it. Again, just a little bit shy. And I don't really know what to do to mark the height. 
I suppose I could measure it, but that's just, that's just absurd, isn't it? You know what? Let's get fancy. way too fancy for me. I should have opened this ahead of time. Because of who I am as a person, I don't have a knife handy. Um, okay, never mind. Sorry. will be good enough for our purposes if I can zero it. Holy shit. It, it's like they knew. <laughs> All right, I see how it is. It worked totally fine until now. Oh, here we go, I found a knife. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Is there not one in the packaging, really? Wow, after all that. Are you kidding me? Maybe there is, whatever, I'll go through it later. All right, fine. That, is, that port is that deep. From the edge of the plastic to the edge of the port is about 11 millimeters and change. So we come back here. Hold that up to the edge of the plastic. Edge of the port is inside that mark. Good enough. And I will find the battery that comes with that or, I don't know, I have batteries. There's one now. <laughs> But it doesn't work. How fascinating. All right, whatever. That's a problem for another time. Let me get this trimmed out. This one I'm actually gonna do on the Dremel because I gotta cut out some of the battery compartment too. We've got to uh, hollow it out and make room. You see the plastic doesn't actually even hit the top of the port because the battery compartment is coming down too low. So I'm gonna shave that down. You'll see what I mean. Or I can just draw it out. I'm gonna do something like that. Ta-da. All right, I'll be back. All right, I think we're finally almost there, I desoldered the extra wire. I ended up having to run all of the other wires underneath the board um, into the gap between this board and the shell where the foam usually is, just to make it all fit. And then I ended up cutting quite a bit out of the rear shell, including these three holes 
this hole here uh, to clear all of these parts. This hole here to clear the USB port and the filters on the back of it. And then this hole here to clear that flat flex cable. And then on top of that, I shaved the entire battery compartment down enough so that I think if we just jam it together, it's gonna work. Um, I don't know how this is supposed to fit. I don't think it's supposed to fit like this. I think it's supposed to fit quite a bit better. Um, I'm thinking my issues are related to the Funny Playing Laminated Kit that I have installed, but who knows? Um, this is by far the most tedious mod I have done on my channel, bar none. Um, highly recommend not using a Funny Playing Laminated housing or backlight kit for this. It's doable. It is clearly doable. Electrically, it's doable. It technically fits. Yes, but I am straight up not having a good time. <laughs> I'm at the point where if I put this thing together and it doesn't just work, um, I'm just gonna call the video here. There. Here, yeah. I just, I just don't care. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. This is probably, I don't wanna say designed because um, there are a lot of things from this company that I feel like there was no thought put into the design, um, but they probably tested it with their own backlight kit and not one of these laminated things. So uh, I'm frustrated, yes. This is fiddly as heck, yes, but a lot of that is probably my own doing. Even put that in, and what do you know? It did squish together. Um, oh, I don't even know when that happened. <sighs> now, what are the chances I broke the freaking screen doing all of this? Drop that in, drop that in, and Oh. <laughs> oh, there was definitely some concern there. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try it out, shall we? So the backlight kit performance should be pretty much identical to how it was. Um, this shouldn't affect the backlight kit whatsoever. Uh, in fact, I still have my touch sensor. There it is. I can press and hold, yada yada. Everybody happy. Uh, the only thing is there is a pressure spot right dead center in the screen. I know exactly what that's from. I just, I, I, I can't bring myself to do what needs to be done. So we're just going to play. And try it out. First with, actually, I'm gonna plug my recording phone here and I'm just gonna plug that straight in. Hey, look, they finally added USB-C host support. See that, see that? That means it's on. All right, so we can undock that. Game Boy is still on, everything seems to be working. Happy Shiny, cha-da. Um, oh, 
I was just about to comment on, on how I don't see it on my capture card, but um, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Plug that in, and capture works. That works. So now we need. Da, 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 da. I'm just going to use the 8 bit do one. Ugh, I hate these aftermarket parts. They don't fit well together. Turn that on, and I think it was LR start to change the form factor. Uh, no, that just turns off my controller. What was the keyboard shortcuts? Keyboard. What was the controller shortcut? Hmm. <laughs> Wow, that is really frustrating. Oh, there it is. Okay. It was select L and R, not start. That's my bad. So start L and R. I'm sorry, select L and R. Hold that. Doesn't seem to do anything because my controller's not on. Let's try that again. Select L and R. No? Who knows? Let's see if this thing's even working. Oh. Easy flesh. There it is. Uh. No, okay, that is plugged. Okay, so let us do. Two forty P. Oh, you know what? I should have done the aging test first. Oh, this doesn't change the aspect ratio. This switches the internal screen on and off. Jesus. So yeah, that is working totally fine. We hold select L and R. The screen comes on and off. That's it. Good lord. Marco, what are you doing? Um, long press select A and B to adjust the HDMI image ratio on off the display console by long press select L and R. Oh, select. Oh, okay. So if we do select A and B, that should change our aspect ratio. Yes. Yes. All right, so those are our three options. Let me pull up the full screen stripey test. And we can take a look at all three scaling options. Nope. Does that work? There we go. Maybe. Yeah. You can cycle through them. Um, I guess go ahead and uh, pause the video if you want to inspect that a little bit more closely. But it looks like this first aspect ratio. Um, I don't know. The aspect ratio looks right. It's probably not. What am I looking for? I want. Linearity, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's right. The circles look like circles. And then if we change to that one, that is full screen. Um, I guess it the 3 to 2 aspect ratio of the GBA is close enough to um, 16 by 9 that it doesn't look terrible in most cases. But... Eh. Ain't too bad. This whole deal at 5 volts is pulling about... Well, I suppose it doesn't say. My uh, gauge doesn't get that fine. Can I flip that? Yeah. 
So it's it's flipping back and forth between 0.2 and 0.24. Uh, so 200 and 240 milliamps, which is quite a big variance. I don't know if we can do anything with that. Let's try one more. Select A and B. I believe, ah, that one's the full screen one. Uh, do we have anything cut off? We don't. That's nice. Swap between those again. Normal aspect ratio, scaled, and then full screen. So this one, let's go to full screen stripes. Uh, the scaling actually looks pretty even, at least on the horizontal scaling. You can see with this horizontal stripes, the vertical scaling is... Well, actually, no, that looks pretty even, too. I think any weird artifacting I'm seeing um, is not a result of the scaling. I think it's just whatever resolution this thing is outputting and whatever resolution my capture card is um, capturing. I think my capture card's doing some scaling is what I'm trying to say. And then if we go to full screen, hmm, I think it's actually the same thing. It looks pretty even, definitely blurry, but even. <laughs> Doesn't look bad, though. I think I'd probably stick with this just because it's nice and sharp, and I like sharp. Um, and the aspect ratio is going to be fine. Uh, let's do oh, that one, that one. What's the one I'm looking for? Yeah, that's obviously going to perform horrible, um, but that's because whatever screen you're watching this on and the screen I'm displaying this on, um, the pixel response is just way better than anything that would have been in a Game Boy. Ah, shoot, what are we looking for? I don't even remember. Is there a way to reboot this remotely? Probably only have the two. Yeah, of course. So, it looks like the only documented shortcuts are select A and B, to change the aspect ratio and select L and R to enable and disable the internal screen. Personally, I don't see the point in um, leaving this enabled when you have it docked, especially since it comes back on when you undock it. But let's see if it turns back off when we redock it. It does not, but that's okay. Uh, did that reset? On me? It did. That's annoying. Do we have to change that every single time? Wow, that's annoying. It doesn't even remember the last use aspect ratio. So if we set this to full screen and then undock it. See that's still displaying. And then da, 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 da. dock that in. And it's not long it's no longer full screen. So you have to set that every single time. That's annoying. Uh, what about when we just power cycle and don't undock? Probably the same thing. Oh no! It stuck that time, that's weird. We also probably want to turn the volume off on the Game Boy itself. Do we still have volume output? Yeah, we do. Hopefully it's capturing properly this time. I did actually check that in advance of filming. Um, and I think I've got the audio issue fixed finally. Or it was playing two tracks of audio. I just... I messed up my configuration. It seems to be. Play through this. This is not the correct. Game. 
in testing this, I think. But it looks darn good. And, um... I guess I can't argue with the results. I'm not gonna play this right now, I'll get into it. Let's try... Game Boy Color. Yeah, so it kept the aspect ratio, and if you want to be an absolute freaking troglodyte, let's go ahead and pull this game up here. Like, aspect ratio looks totally fine because it's the correct aspect ratio. But we can do this. Boom, boom, and then boom. And now you've got full screen. Wide screen Game Boy Color. It looks horrifying, but you know, you do you, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why it stores uh, the aspect ratio on power down, but not on dock and redock. Maybe it's because it's re-establishing the HDMI connection and it has to renegotiate a resolution or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Um, as far as the video quality goes, though, I see zero issues. I don't see any frame dropping or frame skipping. Um, and even if I did, I would likely attribute that to my capture card. Um, especially since I'm watching this through the capture footage and not through the pass-through. But if I switch to pass-through, it's gonna enable audio and then I'm gonna get the double audio again. So, we're trying my best here. Um, input lag. Again, I don't feel any issues, especially through the capture. It's gonna be even better plugged in directly to a TV or using the pass-through on my capture card. I'm I'm good with it. Let me put in the Game Boy Color flash cart and we'll try one more thing. If I can find it, there it is. Easy play. God, what did I just start? Did I just start the firmware update by accident? I think I did. Hopefully I didn't just brick my easy flash doing that. Oh, see now the resolution's wrong after that power cycle or the aspect ratio. Where is it? I can't even tell anymore. Oh, it was my controller that shut off. Whoops. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe we can just test with Zelda. That's fine. If I had it. Really? I swear, I don't understand how this happens. All right, easy flash, or whatever drive it is. Oof. Yes, I know, Zelda.gb. I'm just gonna do the same tests I usually do. Uh, I'm gonna explain it even though it's not really that relevant here. Um, 
because as I like to call it, this is the 55 inch backlight kit on account of you plug this into your TV and whatever your TV performs like is the performance you'll expect to get out of this. Um, but the original Game Boy games didn't have any way of doing transparency effects. So devs worked around that by utilizing a feature of the original screens, which was their terrible pixel response. Uh, so they would just flicker sprites on and off as quick as they could, and the pea soup of the original Game Boy screens would result in a nice transparency effect. Uh, but fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, um, modern screens are a lot better in that regard. So it just shows the flickering, and that's why we see this guy's chain flicker. Uh, and then if we go back and forth, you can see it's scrolling pretty smooth. On my capture footage, I am seeing a little bit of judder, but I'm willing to bet that that's just the OBS overlay and not the actual performance output, because I, I can't imagine it would be dropping frames. Like, there's nothing... Like, it either works or it doesn't, you know? That's, that's not how HDMI works. Um... I don't know. Looks pretty good. Can I do the reset from here? Maybe. There it goes. Uh, what was the other thing we wanted to test? You're kidding me. Do I not have them on here? One of these days, I'm going to put all of my test ROMs on all of my flashcards. Oh, it's right here. Whew. I was getting mad. All right, let's try scrolling bars. Same deal as before. As long as it's looking nice and smooth, everything is good. Um, with this test, I can tell that OBS is doing me dirty but I can also see that it's not dropping any frames or uh, uh, stuttering at all. I'm gonna switch to pass through real quick just to verify and it is smooth as silk on the pass through, but OBS is lagging something fierce. Kind of interesting, but I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, when the S in the word scrolling passes on the left-hand side of the screen, it issues an LCD reset command. A lot of older backlight kits struggled with these resets, because um, as it turns out, a lot of only the older games did it. Newer, like Game Boy Color-ish and newer games didn't really use the reset command, so it just it was uncommon and not accounted for, but I don't know. Hasn't been a problem in a while, but... I still like to take a look anyway, just in case. And in this case, our concern is unwarranted. Gradient flicker test. I don't think we need to do any of that. Uh, one thing I will do, let me get... I think I need to swap back to... GBA cart. Uh, that's what I get for trying to use the shortcut. No, oh, we won't back that up. And it was already set to the correct aspect ratio. I want 240p. That's what I'm looking for. I wanted to go back to doo, 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 the full screen stripes test because this specific kit even on this test this test would trigger the touch sensor for whatever reason but it's not doing it now and I find that interesting I don't know nothing has changed aside from introducing that extra um, 
interposer between the kit and the Game Boy Advance itself. But we've also got, in theory, more power available to us. So yeah, it's working off the internal battery. Everything's happy shiny. But if we pop that out, set the Game Boy to on, plug that back in, it does work without batteries installed. There's zero reason to leave a battery installed if all you want to do is use this dock. Uh, but keep in mind that swapping games while it's docked is kind of fiddly because this thing is literally like it looks like it's resting in the housing, but it's really not. It's resting on this USB port and probably nothing else. Um, so be gentle. Uh, there is no save that we need to copy. Um, let's just try Pokemon Emerald real quick. Get into the overworld here, and then I'll reset the aspect ratio. Again, because it changed. There's that, there's that, there's that. There it is. Nice and pretty. Everything working. Happy shiny. Uh, I suppose the real test is if I can play Mario on this thing, huh? Do I have that handy? It's not the one I want, but it is the one I want. I'm just going to run through this real quick. And the intent here is to make sure that uh, the input lag is actually reasonably playable. Um, come on. I don't expect problems, but I just want to double check. There it goes. Oh! That doesn't look great on here. Uh, so this Famicom Classic version of this specific Mario game, uh, actually I think all of the Famicom Classics are like this. Um, the actual game itself. It, this is emulation. It's emulating the NES console. Well, partially. It's partially emulating the NES console. Um, so what it's doing is... Oh, God, I'm so bad at this. I'm so used to Super Mario World that um, my muscle memory is trying to take over on the first level, and <laughs> the first level is totally different. Uh, anyway, uh, the original NES could actually output higher resolution video than the Game Boy Advance. Um, not more colors, mind you, just literally more pixels uh, vertically. And uh, the easiest way, or at least the way they chose to do this, is the devs just scaled the video dynamically as the Game Boy Advance renders it. Uh, so that's why we get a lot of flickering on the background elements, uh, like the ground, the bushes, the clouds. Uh, that's why this particular game with some of the IPS kits leaves some uh, artifacts on the screen because this, the flickering that it's doing is actually leaving a little bit of burn-in on the LCD. Uh, I, I, I call it burn-in, but it's... It's image retention, really. It's not damaging the LCD. It just looks bad. That was a horrible test, because I can't play this game worth a shit. Let's do one more level. And so, anyway, the scaling... Oops. The scaling is pretty decent. Uh, but it's kind of weird. Like, it's... It's pixel perfect, but only because they're cutting out... Oh, that was dumb. 
<laughs> because they're cutting out rows periodically. So you'll get one row, it'll flicker in, and then the row it replaced will flicker in, and they'll trade off, blah blah blah. It's kind of... kind of weird. Oh! I knew that was going to happen, and I tried it anyway. Yeah, I'm terrible at Mario, especially when I'm trying to talk through it. I mean, I'm terrible at Mario on a good day, but especially when I'm trying to talk through it. Anyway, seems to work fine with the 8-bit do controller. I don't expect any weird controller compatibility issues. Um, the previous one worked with all these controllers, and, you know, I opened up the dock. You could see that it's basically unchanged, so I don't expect it to have changed. Um, that is definitely not me playing, that's just the demo. Uh, Alright, as far as performance goes, I have complained quite significantly throughout the course of this video. I really have. I'm sure that is no secret. But aside from the install itself, it does work. Like, I, I've got no real complaints. Um, that'll shut off on its own. The other solder point that I removed the wire because we just have access to it so it doesn't really matter. The other solder point is for 5 volt input on the USB-C port. So my battery mod already has USB-C and there's no point in having two ports. Like I have the wrong battery cover on this thing or the wrong battery mod, depending on your point of view. Uh, oh god. <laughs> Let's turn the Game Boy off. I just, I stared at it in disbelief as I did that. Uh, let me drop this in. Also a retro modding mod, but that one fits a little bit better. Now we have two USB-C ports. Uh, but anyway, the intent is you solder the wire from the 5 volt here, and let's let's just do it, why not? Uh, to uh, retro modding does not support this, so they did not make it easy. <sighs> but we can figure it out. Just pop this in continuity mode. And that's ground, which means that's ground, which means that should be charge positive. Can we put that there? I think we can put that there. Probably the easiest place to put it. Alright, so I am going to solder the input to the left of diode 1. That's probably a reverse polarity protection diode. You don't have to worry about it too much. Or we can use the left pad of R3 right here. Either of these two components right by the charge port. I don't think we should have a problem. I don't recommend doing this if you do not, like, explicitly know exactly what you're doing. Um, I have two of these. I'm going to test this on the older one because if I were to accidentally kill one, I'd prefer to kill the older one that doesn't have a battery connector and has a lower capacity battery. Uh, but the actual battery mods themselves between these two revisions are... I mean, I'm sure there are some differences, but for the stuff we're doing, they're identical. All right, tin up R3. Solder down. And then I guess 
soldering inside the case isn't the best idea, but I sure as hell I'm not taking this apart again if I can avoid it. Solder that. And then it should be able to get its ground connection through the battery terminal. Um, they don't they don't call it common ground for no reason. Um, and that should be it. I think we can just plug that in. Ta-da! And it's charging. Just like that. And now I can put on a battery cover that does not have a USB cutout, which <laughs> I don't have the right color handy, but y you get the idea. And put that in there. And plug that in, you can see the charging, because I have the clear battery door on there. How convenient! It's almost like I planned that. I didn't, but it's almost like I did. Uh, it's reversible. That's a good sign. Let's try USB-C again. I already tried it in this orientation. Works totally fine. Try it like this. Also works totally fine. So they have at least improved upon that. Uh, the old dock, which I have right here, didn't work with USB-C. And might work with this as far as button inputs go, but not with this cord. Um, we have no way of getting video output, so I I don't know exactly how much that matters. If you use an 8-bit do controller dongle, I think it lives in here now. I'm just curious what the compatibility between these is. I doubt gonna work nicely but try it out old dock new mod it's not even charging I'm not gonna bother testing it further if it's not charging then it's not wired right so I didn't kill this did I no. I think that's all I've got. Um, sorry for the long video guys, but you know the drill. Um, you, you've come to expect it from me at this point, and you know what? I'm not going to apologize. You knew exactly how long this video was going into it. Unless, of course, I decide to premiere this and you're here during the premiere, then you don't know exactly how long it's going to be, in which case I am sorry for the long one. Uh, but for everyone else, you knew what you're getting into. You have only yourself to blame. Um, I will go ahead and throw some links down in the description to the other times I have done similar mods, uh, these two bad boys. Um, there is zero reason to do these two when this exists. However, probably don't do it with a funny playing laminated Game Boy. That was, that was one of the most tedious things I have ever done. Um, definitely the most tedious I've ever done for this channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still a little on edge on it. Um, I think that's about all I've got, though. Um, links in the description. Um, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this to me to check out. I'm sure they're going to be less than pleased with all the mad crap I'm talking about it, but... It's a shitty kit. I'm going to call it a shitty kit. It is what it is. Uh, that being said, the performance... The performance is alright. It's just the install that sucks. But once it's installed, uh, as long as you don't ever have to take apart your Game Boy again, it's probably fine. I do have to take apart this Game Boy and figure out that pressure spot in the middle of my screen. I have no idea what it is. Um, maybe if I just... 
you know, finger it enough, it'll work itself out, but I don't think that's happening. I still got a pretty gnarly pressure spot, but there's no way in hell I'm doing that on camera and definitely not doing it tonight, right in the middle under the E. Uh, oops, those aren't hot swappable. Don't do that. Um, I'll figure that out, but chances are slim that that will make it into the video. So anyway, that's all I've got. Um, I don't remember if I said this, so shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this. I did say that. Um, I don't know if they are going to be selling these. At the very least, they are not currently selling them. Uh, but if they do sell them, I will go ahead and throw a link down in the description to where you can grab one of these. Uh, otherwise, you know, your, your favorite retailer on AliExpress is going to carry them and probably cheaper, but then it's also coming from China. Uh, and so shipping is going to take like a month minimum. Um, and, but if you're okay with that, then yeah, it is cheaper. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've got. Links in the description. Uh, I'll update my wiki and I'll update my site that links to the wiki that I have linked in the description has tools and such, those things. Um, I did not run this thing under a power supply and I can't really tell you how much power this thing takes because the battery is charging. Um, off, it's pulling 500 milliamp hours on it jumps up to 700 ish um that's about right i wager i don't think this mod should add any power footprint usage when you're not using it uh it should just all be passed through so yeah it's pretty decent and look at that the power pathing is actually working right like we can pull that out, it's going to stop charging because we disconnect the ground, but the Game Boy's still on, right? How neat is that? Of course it turns off when we unplug it, but yeah. Alright, All right, that's enough of that. Look at you all next time. Thanks for sticking with me. New calipers time. Yeah, buddy. By the way, the battery was stapled to the instructions, which is, of course, why I couldn't find it. Why would I look at the instructions? <laughs>